One of the things I always am interested in is a Bible student having balanced knowledge. Welcome back, everyone. As you know, we've been talking about the seven reasons why trials, difficulties, temptations come your way. And remember now, I don't care if that trial or that temptation is trying to move you to uh, a negative response or move you to a positive response. What God is saying is for the child of God, for the one in which he's uh, chosen from the foundations of the world to be holy and without blame before him, there is a proving process and there is no difficulty no challenge that will destroy you I think you need to hear this and you need to hear me good if God put his spirit in you then he's going to see to it that his Holy Spirit will work through you he did not choose you to be a failure God did not make junk when he put his Holy Spirit inside you he is expecting his Holy Spirit to produce for you for his glory and so to do that he has to help you to become more inclined to fear him what do you mean fear him is that shaking in your boots no the word fear in the Bible speaks to reverence and respect and as you well know the greatest way that you get anyone to respect another person is when you're in need and they give you help when you're in need yes when you're in need beyond your ability and then you come in a place where you have no other options and someone comes to help you and that's the only reason why they're there is to help you you have greater respect for that individual and so it is with God many people say they fear the Lord they respect the Lord but God is going to see to it that you not only respect him but that you must depend upon him on a day by day basis and we left off saying he sends the trials, he sends the difficulties to remove you from depending upon worldly things. And we talked about how he shifted Moses from a natural inclination to the things of this life to a more spiritual inclination because he was constantly moving him to walk by faith. And so was it with the disciples when he was teaching Philip and some of the others of how uh, physical things can be moved by spiritual matters. He wanted them to see the possibilities that come with God because you know as well as I do after you experience the power of God then you know there's nothing too hard for God and so now we're shifting to the fourth reason why he allows trials and difficulties to come in your life and it's to call you call you and I to our eternal hope remember hope speaks to a positive expectation in God it's not a wish I may it's not I wish I might it speaks to a positive expectation it's something that you know is going to happen and the only way you can get to that degree of confidence is to be more uh, a person that walks by faith and seeing the results and so think about it you and I like to use an illustration how will you think of eternal inter eternal things in a more practical way unless you have some experiences in a practical way to prompt you to think of eternal eternity what do you mean pastor consider for a moment the most precious and important person in your life whoever that is it might be your spouse might be your mother might be your father you love them very much and and you know they love the Lord very much but in my illustration just consider for, for a moment they just died don't you now as you reflect on it and after you get past the pain because you have to get past the pain because they're no longer here but yet you find yourself longing to see them again don't you now reflect in a way of uh, the frailties of life and maybe having a longing to see them again maybe not immediately but because you know they're in heaven and you know you're still on this earth doesn't it give you more of a reflective thought about eternality about heaven and wanting to see them again that's what Paul was speaking to in 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 when he says for which cause we faint not but though our outward man perish 
yet the inward man is renewed day by day. And then he says, For our light affliction, which is for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. And this is what I call eternal thinking with respect to hope. I call it eternal hope thinking. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Now, back to that play on words. How can you look at things that are not seen? He's looking beyond seeing in the natural, but seeing through the spirit man. That's why God has given you his spirit. But think about it. What good would a hand be if you don't use it? What good would an arm be that, that's not used? It would not function properly unless it's properly used. Why then would God give you his spirit unless he plans for you to exercise it? Well, how can you exercise his Holy Spirit unless there are demands placed upon his Holy Spirit in you? And those demands may very well be how you're going to get through this difficult situation. Oh, yes, I'm talking to you. How are you going to work through this situation? You lost a loved one. You lost a job. You lost a boyfriend. You lost a girlfriend. You lost a relationship. Now, God is saying, how are you going to get through? Are you going to fold like a cheap suit? Is this situation that you've gone through going to define you, going to destroy you, or is it going to develop you? I put my Holy Spirit in you for my Holy Spirit to work through you. And yes, you can get above this situation. And you will. Because He who has begun the good work in you will perform it. Yes, greater is He, I'm talking to you, Greater is he that's in you than he that is in this world. And so when you have an eternal perspective and you know that you have a God that can help you now and help you beyond this life, you live far more confidently. You, f you live in a way that anticipates the power and the strength of God on a day-by-day -day basis. Peter understood that too. Remember, he's the same one that denied the Lord multiple times but not anymore look at first peter chapter 1 verse 3 he says blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ which which our, our lord jesus christ which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again in a lively hope and notice this eternal glory thinking he says to an inheritance incorruptible undefiled and cannot fade away and notice this reserved hallelujah in heaven for you. I don't know about you, but I like the idea that when I go to certain places and there's a crowd, they have a spot reserved for me. I like it when I go to a particular concert to see some gospel singer and, uh, and, uh, and they're popular. Uh, but yet, when I get there, I got reserved seating. That means that I did some things in preparation to make sure that when I get there, I have very little difficulty getting where I want to get. That's why you must walk by faith now. Because you have some glory that's reserved for you. But it must be exercised down here. Yes, realize that and walk in it. The fifth reason is uh, in terms of why difficulties and trials are necessary for you is to reveal who you really love. Yeah, we're going to spend a little time there because the Bible says that we know that all things work together for the good. Not for everybody, but for them that love God, number one. Number two, for those who are called according to his purpose. And you know what I've discovered in my own life? I didn't really know how much I love God until I was challenged to uh, how I was going to get out of certain situations. Because what I've discovered in my life is that we say we love God, but sometimes the difficulties will be the proving point of how much we love God. Because did you notice uh, in your life that where you go through the time of trouble and who you depend upon in the time of trouble truly is who you love and who you respect? Think about that for a moment.
Do you go uh, when you're in a financial uh, uh, strait? Do you go to your mother, your father first, or do you go to God? When you have a pain in your body, do you go to the doctor, the pills first, or do you go to God? When you have an emotional uh, difficulty, when that person didn't call, or that difficulty in your heart, uh, where you may feel somebody uh, maybe have misused you or, or forgotten about you. Do you go to uh, yourself and say, woe is me, or do you go first to God? See, at the point of difficulty, at the point of trial, you really find out who you truly love. Because wherever you go first is really who you love first. Sometimes we go to ourselves. And sometimes people who actually love God they really do care about God, but they're so self-centered that they cannot hear the voice of God and they don't depend upon Him long enough to hear His voice to be able to hear what He has to do to get them out of the predicament they're in. I'm telling you that that's why the text says in Romans 8 and 20, 28, and we know. How are you going to know that all things work together for good unless you know? And that means you have difficulty that you have to go through. And so the fifth reason why you have trials is to reveal who you really love. I'm reminded of Genesis chapter 22 when it talked about Abraham and Abraham, of course, uh, sacrificing his own son. And the Bible says that he stretched forth his hand in uh, Genesis chapter 22, verse number 10, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, here I am. And he said, Lay not your hand upon this young boy, neither do thou anything unto him. Notice this text. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. Now I want to reflect on that as we come to the conclusion of this segment. What does God want you to know about yourself? See, when the text says that God said, quote unquote, now I know that there's nothing that you will hold back from me. Do you really believe that God didn't know the heart of Abraham? Certainly did. What he's really saying is now you know who you are and you know more importantly how much you love me even more so than the son that I gave you. See, what God wants you to know is where your heart is. To what extent do you really love Him? Really. I mean, like, really. So, so does this situation that you're going through define you? See, there are moments in your life, uh, you need to get this, saints of God, there are moments in your life that are, uh, the Bible calls them, uh, there's a word called chronos. They all reflect and speak to time. There's a word called chronos, which speaks to chronological, uh, 10 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. But there's another word called kairos, which means a specific definitive time that never will be reproduced and never be duplicated. There are things in your life that are experiential with God that he has to help you to grow in. And sometimes it may be a loss of life. Sometimes it may be a loss of a relationship. Sometimes it may be a loss of a job and sometimes it may be a loss of confidence because he wants you to know that this is a defining moment in your life that you're going to really prove that you love me. Yes, then you'll know how much you really fear or respect the, or respect the Lord. And I think the other point as we close on this segment is remember the text says that now I know that you won't withhold from me your only son. So my question to you is, what do you really love so much that you will withhold from God? I will pretty much guarantee you that that's the very thing that God is going to sift you in. Because he says, you shall have no other gods but me. And do you know sometimes people have family members that they idolize more than God? Jobs they love more than God? kind of a narcissistic attitude about themselves that they love more than God, God is going to see to it that your love for Him is unparalleled, without competition. We look forward to you coming back to the final segment 
in Jesus' name.